your bones. Proverbs 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. The disciple is full of information that is valuable to us for our salvation and deliverance. We learn from this scripture that if the one's spirit is broken, the bones go dry. Bones are carriers of good or bad anointing. It is with this background and understanding that some of the issues that we deal with in life are deep-seated in the bone. Please bear with me. Your patience will help you understand this message. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy. Like a two-mouthed sword, it will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. This is vital information for my salvation. The Word wants the total man, spirit, soul, and body. Job 20 verses 11 His bones are full of sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Some of the sin or problems that you are struggling with are not of today making. They became strongholds when you were young. You cannot escape cheating because you started cheating at a young age. As you grew older, the stronghold did as well. The Bible says such. If not dealt with, you will sadly carry cheating to the grave. You got married, you are still cheating. And it has brought problems into your marriage. I have good news today. Jesus is able to save and deliver you. Deliverance is in Jesus. The choice is yours. Proverbs chapter 15, verses 30. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report makes the bones healthy. The Bible tells us that what the eyes conceive brings joy to the heart, but it is the good report that makes the bones health. What is a good report that can affect the bones according to the Bible? A classic example of a good report is Isaiah 53, verses 1 to 6. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he has wounded for our transgressions. He was buried for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The anointing of God penetrates your spirit through to the bone skeletal structure according to 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 21. So it was, as they were burying a man, that suddenly they spied a band of raiders, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha. He revived and stood on his feet. We see something astonishing here. The dead man's body was restored back to the life on coming into contact with the bones of Elisha. The anointing going deep into the bone, hence every believer has to be understood that there is good and bad anointing. Let us find out who Elisha is before we forget. The time was about 150 years after King David reigned and several years after the earlier prophet Elijah had been sent to comfort the nation which had become steeped in idol worship. After being humbled by a severe drought and famine, the nation of God was on the path of returning to true worship. Elijah 
was divinely directed by God to seek his successor, and Elijah found Elisha out in the field plowing on his father's farm. Elijah placed his mantle and outer garment with a cloak on Elisha's shoulders, and Elisha apparently understood this symbolic act as being appointed and anointed to the role of a prophet. Without hesitation, Elisha accepted the call to service, leaving the comfort of his family and home to follow a less predictable life that would require personal sacrifice. Great miracles are done by God through this man, and this is the profile of the bones referred to that brought a man back to life. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. The Bible is full of information that is valuable to us for our salvation and deliverance. We learn from this scripture that if the one's spirit is broken, the bones go dry. Bones are carriers of good or bad anointing. What are your bones carrying? Jesus delivers to the bone. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 to 13. The word discovers our condition. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Is not this amazing? that God, through His Son Jesus, is able to save the body, joints and marrow, the soul, thoughts and intents of the heart, and the spirit. Jesus can deal with and deliver all kind of sin in the bone. Have you ever wondered why it's not going away, even though many people have prayed for you? There is sin and bondage that requires special tools and instruments to uproot and eradicate. Jesus hints on such kind in Mark 9 verses 29. So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. All that which has taken root and become a stronghold can only be removed by prayer and fasting. When did you last fast and pray for your problems? Your last level needs prayer and fasting to be uprooted. Why? Because it's deep in the bone. Your fraud level needs prayer and fasting to be uprooted. Why? Because it's deep in the bone. Your fornication level needs prayer and fasting to be uprooted. Why? Because it's deep in the bone. Your jealousy level needs prayer and fasting to be uprooted. Why? Because it's deep in the bone. Your bitterness level needs prayer and fasting to be uprooted. Why? Because it's deep in the bone. Your craftiness level needs prayer and fasting to be uprooted. Why? Because it's deep in the bone. There is sin and bondage that requires special tools and instruments to uproot and eradicate. Jesus hints on such kind in Mark 9 verses 29. So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being, where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. Hope this has helped you consider and review some of the struggles we face as believers. Give and commit it to Jesus. He is able to save you and in totality. God bless you. Before I gave my life to Christ, when I lived a carnal and fleshly life, I always used to wonder why some of my friends would stay in unhealthy relationships for so long. To me and everyone around them, we would clearly see that the relationship is toxic and not good for both parties. But yet, my friend would still stay in these relationships. I mean, my friends had the means to break up with the girlfriend or boyfriend. They weren't married and there were no kids in the picture. And they used to say to me they wanted to leave, but they couldn't. It's not till I was born again and began to view sex from a biblical perspective that I understood why they could not move on. So today, we're going to look at what happens in the spirit world when you sleep with someone. Today's message is not meant to judge or condemn anyone, but to enlighten people. 
Because every time I preach this message, so many people always tell me, I wish I knew this when I was younger. And the truth is, I also wish I knew this when I was younger. Why you can't leave your toxic relationship. There is a saying that prevention is better than cure. You see, we save ourselves from a lot of heartbreaks by heeding the commands of God. When God puts up a wall against something and instructs you not to do something, it's for your own good. You are his child, and he cares about you. And one of the things God has put up a wall against is sexual immorality. The issue of fornication and adultery is a big one. Time and time again, our Lord tells us to run away from these sins. Let the Bible records speak concerning sexual immorality. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3-4 through 4 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-11 through 11 says, Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Look at the choice of words in 1 Corinthians 6, 18. The word flee means to run away from a place or situation of danger. That is what God regards fornication as, in your life danger. Have you ever seen someone fleeing for their life? When someone is fleeing, they don't care about who's watching or how they look. When someone is fleeing, the only thing that matters to them at that moment is getting themselves as far away from the danger as possible. A person who is fleeing is willing to kick down doors, jump over tables, they do whatever they have to do to get out of that situation. There are some matters that must be seriously, consciously, and deliberately dealt with even after you have given your life to Christ. The issue of the joining of the soul through fornication is one of them. Unfortunately, many believers are not excluded from it. The truth is, sex before marriage creates a joining together. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15-16 through 16 says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Many of us do not know the mystery behind sex. Some call it fun, but they're making a great mistake. Sex is not fun, it's a great mystery. The Bible says that all the sins that anyone commits is without his or her body, but anyone who commits fornication sins against his or her own body. Do you know what this tells me? It tells me that there is something unique about sexual sins. There is something that puts sexual sins in its own category. Any relationship that accommodates sexual intercourse outside of marriage brings about a joining that is not of God. There is a joining that happens that we can't see with our natural eyes. A joining that transcends this world into the unseen world. There is a connection between the two of them that transcends the physical, that transcends any other platonic relationship. There is a connection between them that transcends our five senses. The joining together of these two people even transcended this natural world we live in. Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Where else do we see this terminology? Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. In other words, these two people are married in the unseen world. This is really astonishing to me because I wonder how many people are, quote unquote, single. Their relationship status in this world is single, but in the spirit world, they have nine husbands or 23 wives. 
the joining of the soul and the spirit cannot be separated with distance. This is the reason many people cannot leave their toxic relationships even when they know it's not right for them. Some people think that sex is just for momentary gratification. They do not know that its consequence lies beyond the physical. When the Word of God says that the bed of marriage shall be undefiled, most people do not know that it is for their good. There is no instruction of God that is meant for His selfish interest. Everything God asks us to do is for our utmost good. The only person God wants you to be united in soul with is your spouse. That is why sex is forbidden and sinful outside marriage. Although it is not a sin in itself, however, it is only meant for consummation in marriage. The spiritual joining that takes place between a man and a woman in a relationship who have not yet married but are engaging in sexual sin is very powerful and spiritual. This even applies to a person who is committing adultery. They are joining themselves to that person who they are committing adultery with. When I understood this joining together, the question that I had before I was born again was answered. This was the reason why so many of my friends could not leave a relationship that was not good for them. I used to look at the two people who were involved in fornication, and their relationship is so bad and is so negative. And I would ask myself, why don't they just go their separate ways? They want to leave, but they can't. It's not that simple. This joining together is not something that time heals. Why do you think breakups are so difficult? When the relationship ends, you feel so lost, as if something has been taken away from you, as if a part of you has died. You have a hole in your chest, as if a part of you is missing. But the truth is, something is missing. A part of you has gone with that person, and a part of you is with that person. 